Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music and the people, places, and whiskey that make it happen. I'm Josh, and today I'm reviewing Rich and Rare Whiskey, a blended offering that I bought strictly off the price of $9.99 for 750 milliliters. I've never had it before, and I'm certainly not rich or rare, so let's see what our neighbors up north have to offer this time. This video is brought to you by Flaviar. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. The Rich and Rare brand was created by the Seagram Company, which originally started as the Waterloo Distillery in 1857. Once Joseph E. Seagram joined as a business partner in 1869 and became sole owner in 1883, the company changed names and eventually became one of the biggest spirits companies in Canada. In the early 2000s, however, the brand was sold to Sazerac, a company more well known for providing offerings like Southern Comfort and Bitterman's. To meet the requirements of calling something Canadian whiskey, this whiskey has a high rye content in their mash bill at 31.5% rye, 64% corn, and 4.5% malted barley. The grain is fermented, distilled in a still, and then put in a barrel to be aged for a minimum of three years. The barrel itself must be made of Canadian wood only, but we have no indication from Sazerac whether the barrel is new, old, charred, or uncharred. The last requirement is that all of this must be done in Canada. On the nose, there's a sweet, yeasty bread smell that's overshadowed by something medicinal like acetone. It's a weird, confusing hit to the olfactory senses that reminds you of the price you paid for it. On the tongue, things get a little better. The overwhelming note is of cookie dough that's been in the fridge uncovered for a few hours. There are other notes as well, but again, these are overshadowed by the unique sweetness. I should note that when drunk over ice, everything gets muted and a lot more tolerable. After my initial tasting, this is how I finished the bottle for each subsequent glass. On the finish, there's a lingering bitterness and slight burn. The only way this whiskey was enjoyed by other reviewers online seems to be when used in a fizz or mule cocktail. Other than that, I can't exactly recommend this to a whiskey lover. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. To quote Ron Burgundy, mm, I love scotch. I love scotch. Scotch is got scotch. Of course, I'm also partial to a nice bourbon. Sometimes, however, one can get a little bored drinking the same old stuff, so it's always fun to try something new, but without breaking the bank on an unknown product. Good thing Flaviar exists. Flaviar is a band of spirits enthusiasts, inspired by culture, rich history, and the art of distillation. They forage the world of spirits for the finest, rarest, and most unique expressions out there, and pack it all into a 21st century members club. You are what you drink, diversity and quality matter, and all that should most certainly be enjoyed with style and in good company. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 7% off the entire site. Just enter promo code get started at checkout. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Flaviar for being a sponsor, and let's get back on to the show. Overall, rich and rare whiskey is a bit of a letdown, but not really a surprise given the price. If you're just after cheap whiskey, and Evan Williams or something comparable isn't available, it'll do in a pinch. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you'll consider leaving a comment down below about your take on rich and rare whiskey. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up there. If you'd like to subscribe, click over there. Don't forget to ring the bell. And if you want to hear some of my original music, click over there. Remember to be amazing and we'll see you next time on Room 6.